<laughs> you guys just sent this clip to your mom. <laughs> that's so cool. I don't know if that's too much knee. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay. I'll hide behind this tree. Cool. The cameraman was also wearing Lone Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm Alan with REI, and this is a first look at the Lone Peak 6. So this is the Lone Peak 6. It's the newest Lone Peak in the Ultra series. It's coming in at about 10.6 ounces. It's got about 25 millimeters of stack height in the midsole. Zero drop still, like you'd expect from Ultra, kind of giving you that balanced cushion feel. And you're getting some max track outsole with some trail claw in the forefoot. So the Lone Peak kind of sits right in the middle of the Ultra Trail series. So it still gives you kind of that good compromise between feeling a little bit of the ground, but still keeping you cushioned enough to go for long distances. The Lone Peak 6 is a really interesting shoe for me because it's a trail runner and it's used as a through hiking shoe, which is <laughs> insane, right? Like it's cool. Lots of folks are through hiking and trail runners, which is awesome. But specifically the Lone Peak has inspired folks to through hike for miles beyond what most trail runners would hold up to. And Ultra has kind of really balanced what they wanted to give trail runners that are looking for trail running experience, while also building in durability options for folks that are using it as a through hiking shoe. Ultra really designed this shoe with lots of things in mind, but really they were looking at kind of like middle of the road, gets everything done shoe. It's not gonna be their fastest trail shoe. It's not gonna be their most cushion shoe. It's gonna be a tackle anything that comes at you, maybe some days you want to hike, maybe some days you want to run, maybe you want to tackle that 100 miler trail runner that can get it done. So Lone Peak Series has been around for a really long time, celebrated a 10 year anniversary actually last year, which is cool. It was built actually around Brian Beckstead, who's the co-founder of Ultra. This was his prototype for the Wasatch 100 in Utah. So built as an ultra shoe, which is pretty rad, built around the needs that he felt needed to be addressed in the market. And it's become this legendary trail shoe. You see a ton of trail runners out on local trails wearing not only just ultra shoes, but specifically the Lone Peak. And people are excited to see what's been updated and kind of excited to see if their favorite features have stayed the same or how they maybe gotten a little bit better. So I've been running in ultra shoes for a couple years now, and the two shoes that I primarily have run in is the Superior, which is a little bit more of a feel shoe, meaning that I can feel things uh, more underfoot because it's got a little bit less cushioning in the midsole, and the Timps, uh, which has more cushioning in the midsole and let me kind of have that cushiony feeling on most of my runs. I've run in Lone Peak 5s, which was kind of cool, and this just felt a little bit roomier and a little bit like I had uh, more room in a volume uh, sense, so really enjoyed that feeling. It also just felt kind of like similar to what I expect, like a softer, more malleable trail shoe, which is something that I've kind of grown to love, the lack of rigidity in a really beefy trail shoe. So I was kind of interested to see how the Lone Peaks would kind of differ from that experience. And one of the things I noticed right away was that the cushioning was there. It didn't feel like I was crash landing or even feeling everything underfoot like I would in my superiors, but it also didn't feel like I wasn't feeling anything like it did in my Timps. The thing that I'm looking for mostly, honestly, when I'm putting on a new pair of trail runners is the traction. I probably should be looking at comfort, but it it kind of is a second consideration for me at this point. Um, the traction is something that I'm constantly looking at and kind of evaluating. It's what inspires the types of adventures I can go on, what I think can be like a really fun day out on the trail. So I was really attracted to the Lone Peak series in general because of the types of traction that they have formatted on their shoes over the years. And I was really excited to take these out and feel that kind of confidence inspiring traction was still there on the six. When I took them out initially over these last few runs, I was encountering lots of wet roots that are pretty commonplace up here in the Pacific Northwest. It's like you can't get away from that. Even when it's like 80 degrees, it feels like everything's still wet. You know, it's one of those things where you get to something on the trail and you're like, uh, I wish somebody was taking a picture of this because this looks cool. And so I jumped over something and landed on something else just to see how it would feel. Also, one of those things where like you've probably jumped on something before and almost fallen and you're like, I probably shouldn't do that again. But these are new shoes. Maybe the grip will kind of handle it better. So I did do a lot of that. Like I jumped over, I jumped on specifically to some wet rocks, some wet like logs that were kind of on the trail, which was kind of nice. And it was confidence inspiring. 
um, shoes that I actually have about 200 miles on right now are the Solomon Sense Rides, the fours. And those are probably one of my favorite trail shoes to currently wear. I feel like I can take them into the mountain terrain and they can inspire all the adventures that I want to have. And I kind of feel that way about the Lone Peak so far. So I've been kind of just wanting to see like, do I have to always rely on my Solomons or can I take my Ultras out when I want a more balanced cushion experience? And I think the answer is yes. And I'm really excited that the answer is yes. So right now, I think that I'm most attracted to this outsole and I'm really excited to see how it'll perform when the weather changes or when I get into maybe perhaps more technical terrain um, in some of the higher elevation mountains. If I'm looking at the differences between the Lone Peak 6 and the Lone Peak 5 that I spent a little bit more time on, one of the things that I noticed just from an experience standpoint is the difference in the upper. So you can see that the Lone Peak 6 kind of has this extra little eyelet on the side here, halfway up through the upper, whereas the Lone Peak 5 is kind of a little bit more straightforward. It felt like it wasn't going to make that big of a deal until I actually put them on. And to be honest, I kind of played with these eyelets. But even if I didn't use those, when I just kind of tied it the way it came right underfoot, it kind of comes in from underneath. It felt like the upper was able to sit a little bit closer to the top part of my foot and felt a little bit more snug. These are both size nines, but I feel like I'm a little bit looser in the Lone Peak 5 than I am in the 6. And I don't mind loose fit and shoe, to be honest. I'm not like having to cinch my shoes all the time. This just felt like it was a little bit more of a secure hug on the top part of my foot. A couple other upper differences you might notice that I noticed on the Lone Peak 6 was this toe bumper kind of in the front. So you can see the Lone Peak 5 has some perforations just kind of scattered through the front part of the toe box. And you have a little bit more drainage holes kind of like all around the toe bumper for the Lone Peak 6, which theoretically hopefully should make them dry out faster. It also maybe gives you a little bit different types of protections. So on the Lone Peak 5, you have these overlays that are stitched in a little bit more with the Ultra kind of logo on the top. You also have the stitching coming down on this other side. On the Lone Peak 6, it feels like you have more welded construction. So you kind of have the stuff that's lacking that stitching, which is kind of nice. Even on the other side, you have a little bit lacking that stitching. You do have a little bit of stitching that comes in on this other overlay, but it probably is what contributes to making the shoe a tiny bit lighter. If you look on the back side, you still get the gator trap, but notice on the front, you lose the little gator hook on the six. You have it on the five, you don't have it on the six. Do you want to call out that you still are able to use a gator? Um, you just have to hook the front part of that gator to the lace, and then you're all set to go. So I'll have the Velcro on the back. Also, on the back side, you'll notice that the pull tab is a little bit different. This one's oriented on the five vertically, and this one's oriented a little bit more horizontally. Moving through the rest of the shoe, you got the midsole, which is pretty similar in. The five, they introduced the Ultra Ego midsole, so you're gonna get the same midsole in the six. So it's gonna give you kind of that balance between responsiveness and cushioning. And then if you look at the outsole of it, it's kind of funny that the six looks dirtier than the five right now. Maybe it's just more wet trail, I guess, so far. But you're still gonna get that Max Track kind of outsole. You're still gonna get those canted lugs for the trail claw. So pretty similar outsole construction. You're still gonna get a little bit of that lip in the back there to kind of help with that float, but also just to differentiate the shoe, quite honestly. So pretty ex similar experience on the outsole and the midsole from the five to the six. So they've really kind of been intentional with making it durable, which is really nice. So if you're looking for something that'll kind of last, maybe perhaps a little bit longer than some other trail shoes, this will do that. And not just from the standpoint that like you can beat it up on really techy terrain, but you can just keep it going for a lot longer. So again, this, this toe bumper that's kind of like, you know, it's malleable. It's still reinforced in a very specific and intentional way with the types of stitching. Again, we've got the laser welds on there, so it's going to kind of hold up a little bit more. Perhaps I can see even in my Lone Peak 5, you know, when you have stitches, they can kind of come undone a little bit. When you have laser welds, it's a little bit less likely to have that problem. We'll see if there's a peeling problem at all. So far, I think I'm excited that they've made that change. Also, the midsole, right? Like midsoles really tell you when you should replace your shoes. And having this Ultra Ego midsole, you'll start to see the cracks in there, obviously, when you probably need to replace it. But it's built to kind of get a little bit more mileage than perhaps another midsole might, just because they really want to consider those folks that are using it for through hiking, which is a big advantage to folks that are just using it for trail running. I think it's always interesting too, when you have a shoe that's fairly light, you know, 10.6 per shoe, and you're thinking about durability in that way. And that's a compromise that's a really hard thing for shoe manufacturers to kind of land on. And 
I'm excited to see what this looks like. I know that the fives and the fours and the 4.5s and all of those series of previous Lone Peaks have kind of stood up to the test of time in a lot of those ways. And really, I think the big advantage that Ultra had continuing the line really and making this a legacy shoe was making sure that the mesh was a little bit more durable in that way. I mean, it's got what looks like, you know, the ripstop that maybe a lot of outdoor enthusiasts are familiar with and a lot more of their tech fabrics. So it's a lot more robust of a mesh than perhaps you might be used to in some other lightweight shoes. Even in some of my favorite trail running shoes, the mesh is a lot more permeable and allows for, you know, things to get in there and rip the holes in it or whatever. And so I think with the overlays that they put on there, with the extra welding that they have, and with the type of mesh that they're employing, you can still get a fairly durable shoe at a fairly light weight. You know, the Lone Peak 6 is really built as this can do anything, tackle all the terrain shoe. You have seen this probably if you've been around the PCT, the Appalachian Trail, the CDT, it's really inspiring confidence in a lot of those folks to do some through hikes in. You see it often when you kind of are running with some local trail running groups. The shoe kind of tackles a lot and it does it really well for a lot of people. And I think for folks that aren't really interested in varying their experiences or perhaps maybe feeling everything underfoot or thinking that some max cushioning might be too much cushioning for them, this shoe is actually kind of in a pretty good sweet spot. Like I said, for me, I, I kind of like that difference in experience, but I actually am starting to like this experience as well, and I can see why. So I'd love to recommend the Lone Peak 6 as an everyday trail runner, but I have this voice of Golden Harper, co-founder of Ultra, telling me, you should really rotate footwear. And he's right, you should probably rotate footwear. You should have different experiences in shoes. That being said, this trail runner will tackle anything you need it to do. It'll inspire confidence, whether you're working a trail run in to your running routine in general, or you're tackling that 100 miler. So those are my first impressions from being in the Lone Peak 6. Really stoked to hear what y'all think if you've been in the shoe, or if you're interested in me doing a more in-depth review when I put a few more miles on it, let me know in the comments. If you're looking to try on the Lone Peak 6, come into any REI store or schedule a virtual outfitting appointment, and we're happy to get you fit and get these on your feet. There's lots of Lone Peaks I just noticed. <laughs> <laughs>